Hello, whiskey lovers and gin lovers and lovers of all the good things in the world. Jock here, in my own home, in my little drinks room. And tonight, in my, I'm doing a mini-series about uh, perfumes, scents and drinks. Now, some people think you can never combine the two. I'm not one of these people. I think you can. And I'm talking about two different things today. Um, before I uh, go any further, uh, a little disclaimer. This is going to be long. So if you're not into watching anything long, switch off now. And later on, maybe if you feel like it, you can look at it again. And maybe you might like what I have to say. Okay, I'm talking about two things, two uh, things. One is called Nobile. Nobile is a, a perfume house, a niche perfume house from, from Italy. Uh, it's called Nobile, and this is one of their many perfumes. Uh, Nobile Levante, no, from Nobile 1942. Here is the bottle. It's a beautiful bottle with a, a, a typical Middle Eastern type of dome cork on top. It's a, it's a lovely little bottle. Uh, the Levant is the, the area between Syria, Lebanon, what's now Israel, Palestine, uh, around that area, it was always called the Levant. Now, or always, it was, from, since the Middle Ages, it was called that. Another thing I want to talk about is the Levantine Gin, uh, which is from the Levantine, of course. Eh? So, it's a gin uh, from the Levantine. And it's an oak-aged gin at 46%, made by the Milk and Honey Distillery in Tel Aviv, uh, distilled by uh, my good friend Tom Goran. Now, watch what I'm going to do. Some people pour this straight into the glass. I'm not doing that. I'm going to dip it onto my wrist. And I'm the, the, the thing that many people do wrong when they're putting perfume on is to rub it. Don't do that. Leave it, let it dry into your skin. Now, wait for this. <laughs> now, the perfume. Nobile uh, is a perfume house in from Rome. Got it straight there, yeah. Uh, this is the Levante, which has uh, got notes in it, which is from the Levant, which they consider to be typical of the Levant, the area around Israel, I'm going to spray some of it up on my wrist. That's it. Leave it to dry a minute while I talk. Now, a little bit about Nobile first, and then a little bit about Levantine Gin, and then back and forth, smelling and tasting. Uh, Nobile is a house that was, uh, was put together by Umberto Nobile in 1942, in the middle of the Second World War. Everybody thought he was mad. You must be mad. It's the middle of the Second World War, and here you are uh, starting a new perfume house. But people, they wanted a little bit of luxury, and the only thing that was around was luxury brands like Chanel or, or Guerlain or other big houses, and they just wanted their own luxury brand. So the, the ingredients were around, so Umberto started making this perfume. Uh, not this one, not this very particular one, but there's a whole range of them. You can look them up. Look, just Google... Nobile 1942, there you go, Nobile 1942. Google it and you'll see the amount of stuff they have. Now, um, I've just put some on my wrist and I put some Levantine gin on my other wrist. Uh, the Levantine gin I'm going to sniff first. Sniffing this Levantine gin, now let me read to you what's on the bottle of the ingredients. The ingredients of this gin is juniper berries, origanum, Siricanum, uh, lemon peels, orange chamomile, chamomile, uh, lemon verbena, cinnamon, and black pepper. Very spicy, very, very spicy. I'm going to put some of this in a Glencairn glass. Because it's oak aged, as you can see, it's got, uh, it's got a nice colour to it. It's not... Uh, it's not um, the, the clear gin that you're used to. Uh, I think Toma would, would prefer you to sip it, but whatever you like, you know, 
Now, in the nose, now I'm keeping my other wrist away, in the nose the pepper is coming through really nice and the spices, and in the mouth, I'll just waltz it around, which is my ritual. Smelling it in the glass is different than putting it on my wrist. I like to put alcohol on my wrist from 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 good distilled alcohols. I mean, put them and smell them on my skin. Now, in 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 the glass, it's more lemony. On my skin, it's more pepper. Lemon in the glass, pepper on the wrist. Now, in the mouth. extremely easy to drink. Again, the lemon and the pepper coming through a little bit later in the end. Very spicy indeed. Now, let me smell this uh, Levantine, uh, Levante perfume on the other wrist. That's this one, eh? This beautiful perfume from Levant, from, from Nobile 1942, the, the Levante. It's surprisingly similar. Surprisingly similar, although in the, the the pyramid of notes in the in, in the um, I've written them down. The pyramid of notes in the, that they give for this perfume is as follows. The top note in the in, in the pyramid is maritime notes and neroli, and the middle notes is jasmine and and musk, uh, patchouli, cedar woods, and then it dries down to the base notes, which are vanilla and caramel. Now, if you're looking for vanilla and caramel, you can certainly find it here. This is definitely here. And uh, vanilla and caramel back in, in the perfume as well. Now, I would highly recommend, if you want a good perfume and you think, well, everybody's wearing Chanel, everybody's wearing this, that or the other. I'm not going to badmouth any perfumes because Chanel's good. There's nothing wrong with Chanel at all. But uh, if you want a nice niche perfume, I would really recommend this uh, Nobile, and, and not only the Levante, but they have uh, uh, Chypres and other types of, uh, of uh, they also have Woody and Sandalwood, and they also have Sandolo, they call it, and they have another one called Patchouli, which is a pure patchouli, which I really, really like. It's a quite a linear uh, smell, which I really like, but this one is very, very complex. Now, I lived for a while in the north of Israel, in the upper Galilee, in a region uh, in the north of the Hula Valley, just at the foot of Mount Hermon. We could we could see the Golan Heights from the kibbutz where I lived, and I met my wife, which who's downstairs just now as we speak. Uh, there, and in the you know the, the sun is beating down on the uh, on, on the, the trees. And uh, the Lebanon is to, to the to the north, and, and Jordan is to the is to the east, and Syria is to the north, and it's surrounded by these mountains, and the the sun comes down and beats on the trees. Now you must understand that before the people who live there now, before they lived there, it was marshland, and they drained it, but they wanted stuff to pull the ground together, so they planted uh, eucalyptus trees. And the eucalyptus trees, when I was there in the 70s, were still there, or many of them anyway. They, they, they were fast-growing trees, that's why they were planted, so they could pull all this moisture out of the marshland and it would evaporate up. Now, these trees were there, and jasmine trees were there, and roses, they had a rose garden, and there was cactus uh, plants around with, uh, with cactus roses, uh, and especially the jasmine. As the sun went down, the leaves and the flowers would, would, would let loose the oils. The oils of the trees and the flowers would, would, would come up. And if you were up a, on, on top of a, a building and you looked down into the valley or on a hill looking down into the valley, you could actually see it looked as if there, there was smoke, as if people were burning fires. It wasn't fires, it wasn't smoke, it was actually the oils coming out of the trees and out of the bushes. And these beautiful oils, you, you know, when I was walked out of the little wooden uh, shack where I was living, I, I smelled it straight away. I just fell in love with that scent. I just loved it. And this thing just transported me back to that time. A very beautiful, wonderful time that I had there. And um, uh, yeah, four children born out of it and uh, six grandchildren of that time I had there. Beautiful times in the swimming pool. Uh, the dry down of the gin now, eh? this, the gin is on this wrist here, 
the dry down smell of the gin is all, not identical but very very similar to the uh, to the perfume it's wonderful it's absolutely wonderful and really well worth it you know this is a gin different from other gins that this is meant to be a sipping gin like you would sip whiskey in mm. ah now in the glass the peppers are coming coming through too now let me show you something else boiling about this gin let me show you this here we go uh oh i have a little ball here see the little ball what does it have in its little ball uh it's a it's a thing for making ice balls it's japanese it's a wonderful thing a little wonderful little rubber contraption and in we go an ice ball an absolute perfect round ice ball and because it's such a solid ball of ice this will not melt very fast it will just keep keep there for a long time now watch this watch and wonder watch and wonder as i put this levantine gin onto this how about that eh? and you know it, it doesn't dilute it very much because the ice is not melting the ice is too thick and too solid and too such a big mass of ice that it's not really melting but you can see that the gin is clouding because of it because it's it's unchill filtered and yeah the, the smell has died down the ice has taken the smell down that's what ice does now in the mouth now a nice cool beautiful spicy gin absolutely and totally wonderful and uh, all my friends in 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 Israel, Tomer and Tal and Aitan and Gal and Dana and all the others, forgive me if I've forgotten your name, if I haven't mentioned you just now. Mm. Thank you very much for this wonderful gift of your Levantine gin, ladies and gentlemen. Well worth drinking, Levantine gin from the milk and honey distillery mil m and h milk and honey and there you see it levantine gin all the way from tel aviv uh, matured in, in in oak barrels and similar to the smell of nobile nobile levant i would advise you to give it a go really until the next time and to all my friends in Israel, uh, Lechaim, Slan Shiva, cheers, prost, and uh, Sante, salut.